Welcome back to another LMMS tutorial. In this video, we're going to be learning how to use the piano roll and how to compose uh, different notes and music using LMMS. In the last video, we made this beat right here. And so this is the beat we're gonna be using. Um, but if you're wondering how we got to this point, go ahead and check out the last video. You don't even have to necessarily have a beat for your song, so we could actually um, turn this track off while we're playing if we do that we see it becomes uh, inactive if we click the, off this green light. Then if we play, we don't hear it. And then when the green light's on, we hear it. And when it's off, we don't. So I'm just gonna leave this on here. Um, and let's, let's go ahead and say we want our composition to be uh, four bars long. So we'll make it four of these uh, bars. One, two, three, four. And then we want it to be just completely done after that. So let's grab in now. Um, we want to get uh, an instrument track. And if you have some other tracks on here, you might have uh, like a sample track or an automation track if you just open it up by default. Don't worry about these. These might kind of confuse you. So just go ahead and close them if you have them. So go to remove this track so that all you have is a beaten bass line. And then by default, it's the triple oscillator. So I'll just drag that in. So we'll left click on this instrument, triple oscillator under the instrument plugins. And we'll just have it here. And we can actually move these around too. I think a uh, triple oscillator by default is on the very top. So if we left click over here in these dots to the left side of the cog, we can move this track around and have it be higher or lower. Okay, it doesn't really matter where it appears on the, you know, if it's above or below, but I just want to show that you can move those around. And then we can close our beat and bass line. It doesn't matter. All that information will still stay there. And it's still there. If we want to bring it back, we just click the beat and bass line editor up here to bring it back. Uh, and the piano roll, we click is the right next to the beat and bass line editor. It's show hide piano roll. The key on the keyboard is F7 to bring that uh, up. And so right now it's up, but if we try and play these notes, we don't hear any music. And we can't click anywhere in here either. And that's because we have the piano roll open, but it's not associated with, a, with any track. It's just open. So to associate it with a track, we just click on uh, any one of these squares, these bars in here on the track we want. If we click the beat and bass line, it adds it from our beat and bass line. If we click it on an instrument track, it actually will go ahead and double click. It'll open it up in the piano roll editor. And so now we're at the piano roll, we're, we're editing the triple oscillator. Whereas before we were just doing, uh, well now we are because it's active. But if I take this out, if nothing is active in here, if there's no active squares, uh, bars, then it'll just it'll say no pattern. And that means it doesn't know, maybe we don't have an instrument, or maybe we do have an instrument, but it's just there's no uh, bar. There's no active pattern selected. So we have to make sure we click in here a couple times, or at least once, to have a bar that we can edit it. Okay, so I'm just gonna do my first one right here, make sure that that's the little light gray. And then we'll just double click to start editing this. So you'll notice with this piano roll, we have um, different C's on this, this piano. If you tilt your head to the left, you can kind of see we have a regular piano here. If we click on this, it'll play. It sounds kind of like an organ. I'm just clicking and holding and it dies out a little bit. So we can click on different notes. We can also, in this grid area, we can, uh, we can write. So we see a one, a two, three, four. So here, this is actually bar one, and these green lines here are counts. And so if I click right now, it'll add in uh, a, uh, what's this say? Is this a 16th note? Yeah, this is a 16th note, because if we play like this, so if we play, I think those are quarter notes. What's this thing saying? Uh, the cool thing about um, LMMS is if you ever have a question, you can always click. There's this question mark thing, this I right here. We can click to get information, and we can hover over this Q and click, and it tells us what it is. The Q stands for quantization and controls the grid size of the notes. Okay, gotcha. So that's the grid size that, that we click in. So what this means is, uh, I remember now, so we can actually click and move this around in 16th note increments. If we change this Q to quarter note, then we can only drag it into quarter note increments. So if I try and drag this to the left, it'll only block in every quarter note. 
So if we want it to be um, very, very granular, we can do 164th, and we can actually move this very granular, if that makes sense. So what this is, is time from left to right, and as we play, we see it advances, and it just loops over and over and over again. So if we want to change the note, don't worry about this cue. I, I shouldn't have talked about that just yet. Just leave it at 1 16th is fine. To get rid of a note, uh, we can just right click on it. And to create a note, we left click again. Right click to make it go away, left click to make it appear. Once it's appeared, if you hover over to the end of it, you can make it last longer. Or you can make it shorter. We can bring it down very short here. Make it be like 16th notes. Uh, we can change the uh, we can change how loud it is down here. So note velocity. So we can change all these. Those are all pretty loud, right? Now they're all pretty soft. So the note velocity is down here. And I just left click and hold to change that. Uh, what else can we do? If we scroll up, we can do higher notes too up here. Those get kind of annoying with this instrument. Uh, and then we can go lower too. We can scroll all the way down. And you can hardly hear some of these. That's almost too low to even hear. If you left click and drag, it'll just move the note around. Uh, and then up here, so this setting just says the last note, the last size I made a note, which I think was quarter, uh, quarter note, it, the next note will appear that. So, or we could just say, make every note always be an eighth note. Even if we resize it, have them always be eighth notes. And the setting that says last note just says, um, whatever I resize, if I made the last note very long, make the next note that long as well. You'll notice I'm, I'm clicking over here in the second bar. Um, but the way we have it set up now, we're just going to do just the one um, looping bar. If we want to edit the second bar, what we would do, so let's just get this to where we kind of want it maybe. Uh, oops. Let's just do that. All right, so if we close out of this now, we see this art, we have a, some, a little green active box down here and some dots. If we play, we should hear that playing with our drums. It just plays once though. So if we click over here, we have a second active bar and we can double click and now we can edit the second one. Or we could have gone in, I guess we could have gone in and done it there, but I'm just gonna show you this way. So now we have a completely separate um, second bar. Um, let's do it like this. Now if we close out of this, now we have two separate uh, melodies in two separate bars. If I want to do this first one again, if I come back here and click on this first one and I want to have it uh, play again, I just right click on it and go to copy. Then I come over here, left click to, to make this cell active, and then right click and go to paste. And now we have this first melody playing again in the third bar. Maybe I wanted that, that, that to go out again, so I just uh, right click. It's already copied, but I can copy it and then paste again. So now we have that pasted. So now we have this little song going. And then everything stops and our playhead keeps going. So if we want that to be the extent of our song, we can actually control uh, the loop back points too. If you hover over right here, it says enable disable loop points. If we left click on that, it brings up these green points at the top. I don't know if you can see those. But to set these points, we actually just, we can hit the right mouse button up here in this top bar and it sets this green line. And that just shows, and yours might be a different symbol actually, but it just shows where it's looping from. And if we hit the center mouse button, it shows where it starts looping from. So this will actually only loop between these two bars. Just 
just goes back and over and over again. If we want to loop to the beginning, we hit the center mouse scroll wheel button is how we set that over again. And then if we do the right mouse button, it sets the end of that loop. Does that make sense? So whatever this, whatever, however this green part of the song looks is where it'll loop over and over again. And if that's not enabled, it'll just keep playing off into space forever. So let's say we love this song and we just have a single instrument and a single beat and bass line, which remember we can add in multiple beat bass lines and we can actually add in multiple instruments too if we want to bring in another one and we can have instruments playing over top of instruments and etc. So, so on and so forth. But let's say we just like this and we want to actually publish this song or export it out and use it somewhere. Uh, what we would do is we go to File. If we save it, it just gets saved as a Linux Multimedia Studio project, LMMS project. But we can actually export it. We go down to Export and click. Uh, and it will export this as a WAV file. So I'll save this on my desktop and I'll just call it um, mysong.wav. Hit sa uh, Save. And it has some options here for us, the sample rate. We can just leave everything the same for now, unless you want to change it. But let's just leave everything how it is and hit start. So that was very quick because it's a super short song. And now if we minimize, we can see on my desktop I have my song. And it just plays through that song that I created. And that's it. Uh, yeah. So that is how to create a, a simple song using a beat and a single instrument. In the next video and future videos, we're going to look at making these instruments sound better than just some weird thing and, um, yeah, adding different effects and things as well in there. So I appreciate you watching and catch you on the next video.